It's 2021, I hope you made it well through this last super crazy year. And if you're like most e-commerce business owners, then you wanna use the beginning of this new fresh year to really take your e-commerce business to the next level. And if you wanna do so with the power of Google Ads, whether you are just starting and you wanna get started the right way, or whether you already have a lot of existing sales, 50,000, 100,000 per month, whatever, this video is for you to give you more ideas, to give you really a step-by-step -step framework. It's a pretty, pretty long video, as you can see, because I talk about all kinds of different methods and strategies. And the whole idea behind this video is that you have an actionable step-by-step -step concept. So I talk about literally all the steps that are important and the end result could very well be that you take your sales to a whole new level, both profit-wise and also volume-wise. So no matter who you are, no matter what type of business you have, as long as you sell products online, then this will be helpful for you. Prior to uploading it to YouTube, I showed this video to a couple of people that I'm working with and all of them, even though some of them are pretty advanced business, uh, business owners, learned something totally new. So even if maybe the first or second step is not really exactly useful for you because you're already too far ahead, I highly recommend that you stick with me till the end of this video because chances are that there is a golden nugget somewhere that you can apply or of course a whole range, a whole variety of golden nuggets. So with this being said and without any further ado, let's jump right into the juicy stuff of this video. I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. First things first, who's this for? I don't want to I want don't want you to waste your time. So if you belong to one of these three categories, either you are a dropshipper with low margin products, you know, tons of competition selling highly similar products, the typical dropshipping situation basically, then this is for you. Or if you have an e-commerce brand, you have your own product, you have a more established store, maybe competition sells similar products but not the exact same because you have your own, of course. Or simply, if you're a consultant, an agency, then you want to help your clients grow, you want them to take off and uh, things like that, then this video will be very helpful for you as well. And if we look at the framework connection, you know, it produced results like this. For example, I have to say that not all of these 10.8 million that you see in the screenshot were from this framework. Not all of them were from Google either, but a seven figure amount was. And when I'm applying this framework, I'm not thinking about it, right? It's not that it's this one thing that I always use, but when I thought about, okay, how do you approach new campaigns from scratch? What are you actually doing? Then I came up with this framework. So I thought about what I'm doing and then I translated it into this framework rather than always going exactly by this framework if it makes sense. Here we have another example of a more sort of normal or a less crazy result in a way. Um, this was used through this framework indirectly as well. So if we look at this step-by-step -step framework now from start to finish, start being the beginning and the end hopefully being 100k in sales or something around, uh, around that, the first step is the initial setup. And please keep in mind that, of course, the exact steps might be a little bit different for you. Your situation is different, but I want um, I wanted this thing to be as easy to, to copy and as easy to follow as possible. So the initial setup, this first phase. What I always get asked is what should be your first campaign type or maybe the next campaign type that you want to start now for your business. Is it shopping? Is it smart shopping? Is it search or maybe like display or YouTube? My very, very clear recommendation for anyone starting out now or like redesigning their Google Ads account or so is shopping. And I mean standard shopping in this way, in this case, right? Why standard shopping? Why not smart? Why not something else? Well, I provided or I prepared a little table here, a little spreadsheet, and I put those four main campaign types and five different factors. We have beginner friendliness, we have low cost, we have buying intent, we have search term and placements, and we have massive scale, right? And the thing is that with shopping, four of these five criteria are fulfilled very well and one is like somewhat well uh, fulfilled, right? The massive scale, because in the end, display and YouTube can be scaled more than all the other campaign types, but these three are definitely more than enough for, for most businesses out there. But if we look at smart shopping, which is usually a first guess for most businesses, they are not really low cost because you need a lot of data and data comes obviously through clicks that you have to pay for through impressions. And I can tell that with shopping, that's better with, with standard shopping. Plus, with standard shopping, you can actually analyze what people are looking for. You have insights into search terms. You have insights into what people enter into Google to find you. And if you do smart shopping from scratch, 
you will never have data. I mentioned this example in the past of a client who came to me and was already doing a crazy amount of sales. We we're talking about six figure per month, but for a very, very long time, right? For like pretty much as long as smart shopping ads existed. And we have zero insights into any search query. So even though this guy has made several million dollars so far, we have zero insights in what people are looking for because we have been all, or he has only been using smart ads when we got started. This is something that you should avoid because you want to build negative keyword lists. You want to improve. You want to find out what people are looking for. Smart ads can work amazingly well and they can deliver crazy results. And maybe they work better for you than normal, but you should start with normal. And then later on, as you see here, you know, search has some other disadvantages. The buying intent is less good as on shopping. It's not as beginner friendly to really create a good converting search ad. So this should come later just as display, which has great scaling potential, but it's very hard to do in the beginning. So smart standard shopping first, right? The standard shopping process looks like this in a simplified way. You start with extremely low bits, 20 cents, 30 cents, up to 50 cents, depending on your niche. It could be even lower than 20 cents. I have clients and, and accounts and campaigns where we start with literally five to 10 cent bits and we get clicks. But in your niche, you might have to start with 50, maybe even a little higher than that. You should advertise all your products initially. I see that a lot that people try to artificially drill down their product and they say, hey, I only advertise these three or these five. No, you should start with all of them at the same time because you don't know which one will produce the best results, right? The big advantage of shopping is that you can push all your products into Merchant Center, all of them into a campaign and get started. You don't have to create ads for every single one of them. It's like passive a passive stream of ads in the beginning. Of course, later on, optimization and all that stuff is super important. But in the beginning, push all of them to a Google Ads campaign. Keep a simple feed and focus on titles and images. Don't spend 20 minutes writing each and every description of a product if you have 200 products, right? Focus on the title. Have the most important keywords in this title, the color, the material, the, 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 the product, the maybe multiple keywords that describe the product. These are all important things that should be in the title as well as a highly polished image. These two things are most important. Have an image that actually creates curiosity, an image that is high quality, that looks good. Maybe use white background, um, maybe use an ambient image if all the other guys in your space are using white backgrounds and you want to stand out. The point is that you want to have a very good click through rate for the right people with this. And then last but not least, and I know I say this a lot on this channel, is sharpen your product pages, which means have live chat, have good images, have some urgency that is legit, right? Not, you know, two products left, buy now, 80% off, but add some urgency here and there, have some promotions every now and then, um, make people feel like they should actually take action now by some basic urgency, but not with this crazy exaggeration. Good speed, of course, super important and an easy navigation. Don't have this typical dropshipping navigation all in like one huge category. Use filters, use subcategories, because only if you do all these things and if your product page is also on point, you can convert people long term and profitably because competition isn't sleeping, of course. And if you only have good ads, but not a good store, you will definitely fail with Google, at least in the long run. So that's the initial shopping process. And we see here in an example that they look, they are super simple um, in the beginning, right? We have a campaign here. That's a screenshot that I just took for this. Um, and we have all products in a campaign. We have here 12 cents or 12 British pound cents pence uh, in a, as a, as a maximum CPC with enhanced. And at this point, when I took the screenshot early in the morning, we didn't even have a click yet. This campaign is producing like 20, 30 clicks per day, right? But we don't want to, or we don't have to spend those full 50 pounds per day yet. We are fine with starting small, starting with very low bids, paying the least amount possible and then gradually scaling from there. That's the most important tip that I can give you for the beginning when starting new campaigns, whether you're just starting out or you know starting new campaigns later in your journey, have the lowest possible CPC bit and then gradually increase it from there. So yeah, this was this very basic first um, initial setup part, you know, nothing fancy about that. But now we talk the second step about review. And when we talk about review, um, there are multiple ways to start this review process because it's not that easy to say, you know, review your ads exactly after this and this happened, right? It should be an ongoing thing. But to make it a little more specific here, when should you evaluate your campaigns? 
usually as a, here are three rules of thumb right after two to three hundred clicks or after a hundred to 150 dollars net spend or after roughly seven days whatever comes first so if you have a campaign that spends 50 bucks in total or gets 100 clicks after seven days you should look at it and you should check okay what happened here um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at your Google Ads account uh, account in the meantime. You can of course look at um, you can look at results, and if something is really standing out, like your CPC is like three dollars, of course you have to intervene earlier than uh, when any of these three um, sort of milestones are met. But the important part is that if things are going somewhat smoothly in terms of cost per click is okay, click through rate is like in the one percent range for shopping, or maybe even less than that then keep it running. I get so many messages of people telling me, hey Marco, I spent 30 bucks on shopping, but no sale yet. Of course, no sale yet, because you got like a handful of clicks and your account is brand new and it's all fresh, no optimization, no conversion conversions uh, to, to give Google any data. So give it at very, very, very least seven days. That's already on the very low end, right? But when any of these three things are met, then you can evaluate, then you can look back, you can, um, you know, make improvements. And the possible scenarios when you look at this after seven days or hundred dollars, whatever, right, are that you have no impressions. In this case, you have to try higher bids. You should check if all your products are actually improved, uh, approved. I see a lot of cases where a merchant center has half of the products um, blocked for some reason because the title or because of, uh, you know, missing uh, information or something. And it doesn't show that it doesn't show this in a very prominent way in Google ads, right? So you might not even be aware of that. But if you have no impressions or very, very few try higher bits, that's the most common issue. If you don't have clicks, then try other images first, try higher bits so that you get more impressions so that you can slowly get into the realm of getting higher clicks as well, or simply try other products. You are not married or you shouldn't be married to your products. If you have a product that works on Facebook and you say, hey, I want to make it work on Google as well, that's the wrong approach to this. You, yes, you should try it, but if it doesn't work, don't try to make it work um, by all means. Maybe it's just not a good product for Google, at least not just yet, or maybe you have too many competitors and that's why it doesn't work here. Don't try to make things work that are not meant to work. So other images, most importantly, then try other higher bids and even other products. You can also switch titles, but they haven't got that big of an impact when it comes to the click through rate and the clicks. And the most common issue, of course, we all know that no sales or very, very few sales. And that's the biggest thing that we want to talk about just now as well. There are a million reasons for that, but I just pointed out a few of them for you to, to realize. So this stage is tough and most beginners, of course, have problems in this, right? Most beginners get clicks, most beginners get impressions, but sales are always the critical thing. And this is also what I'm aiming for when people work with me, when they take my training, when we work one on one. That's the big thing that needs work and that isn't easily solved. But I want to give you five key points here. So you are in the situation, help and not getting sales, right? First of all, something that a lot of people miss, reduce your product price. I know it sounds a little bit stupid, but if you charge 50 bucks for a product and you get a lot of clicks but no sales, try 40, try 39 or something like that. The point is you, uh, you're you maybe not aware of the fact that price sensitivity is a thing in your market. Maybe all your competitors charge different prices and people are not ready or not willing to pay your price because it's a little too high. I know as a dropshipper you have limited margins and all that stuff, but it doesn't help if you are not able to convert because of your pricing. So look at this and see that if you get a lot of clicks, maybe you can reduce your price and then, you know, play with it later. Also check your page interaction in Google Analytics. If you see that people are immediately leaving, if you see that people spend 10 seconds on your page, if, if you see that the bounce rate is absolutely crazy, you're not giving people what they've been looking for. This could mean that you have to redesign your page, that you have to use different images, that you have to just set a different tone. It usually means that if you have really, really bad interactions and, and metrics on Google Analytics that you didn't live up to your expe to the expectations of your, uh, of your potential customers. And that's why they are quickly leaving, hitting the back button and going to another competitor for this product. Remember that you're not alone out there. There are a ton of competitors trying to sell the same thing as you. And that's super important to remember. So rebuild your product page, make it shorter or longer. If you have a super long page, as I see all the time with 
crazy long descriptions that is not even needed for most products out there okay try to make a way shorter version try to make a smoother version uh, version try to add a video if you didn't have one before or remove it if you only use the video and you have so many clicks without any sale Add reviews, add reviews that, um, you know, instead of just importing 500 AliExpress reviews that sound super non-legit, maybe just craft a few reviews. And guys, this is like a morally, you know, gray area because every e-commerce business out there in the beginning is creating some reviews, unfortunately. And um, if you don't do any of that stuff, it's pretty hard, right? We know that everyone uses those review apps. But if you're already adding some reviews in the beginning to kickstart things, then I would rather add a few high quality reviews than, you know, 500 five star reviews that are all just imported. So um, that's really something quite important to, to leverage and increase sales. Then analyze your search queries. Are they actually relevant? In the beginning, you should focus on the most relevant search queries first. So if you are selling this very specific variation of a... I don't know, uh, let's say a typical product, these cosmetics products, the hair removal devices, things like that, right? Don't look for some abstraction of that. Don't look, don't target people looking for hair removal without anything else, right? In the beginning, you want to specifically target hair removal device, ideally with your key features. So if you have a hair removal device that is uh, running on Bluetooth, or if you have a hair removal device that has something special to it, try to get search queries specifically for that key feature. How do you do that? By adding negative keywords for the rest. Use negative keywords for hair removal. Maybe even use negative keywords for hair removal device. If you literally want to pe want people to specifically enter your long tail version of the product in order to get the best results. Later on, you will get more and more loose and you will add more and more traffic and you will then be able to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars per day with all that, that stuff. But in the beginning, focus on the absolute lowest hanging fruits and advertise different products if available, right? If you have more, usually it looks like this. You get a lot of clicks for just a few products in the beginning and if they don't make any sales, throw them out or highly reduce the bids and try other products instead that may work better. So don't just continue to advertise the same and the same and the same product over and over again, wasting so, so uh, many clicks and wasting so much budget. Try something else instead. That's also extremely important. And as I said, those five points are just the very, very surface. They are just the tip of the iceberg. Of course, there is the rest is not that easy to quickly summarize, okay? Because there are so many details and so many points and so many things to test from biddings, from bidding strategies to integrating analytics in a more in-depth way, different, uh, you know, keyword targeting, different priorities of campaigns, negative keyword lists, and so on and so forth. It gets very intense, but I hope that this was a good first overview. If you need more additional help with that, if you really have a problem or you really want to scale and you want to go through this entire huge checklist you may want to check the link in the description i'm sure that in one way or another i can help you with training or one-on-one -on -one or just look at your campaigns with you to um yeah hopefully get you where you want to be so the third step after the review right now you 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 set your initial campaigns up you reviewed them and you have an idea of like what's going wrong is it sales is it clicks whatever and you looked at some of the possible reasons now you want to create next campaigns that's the third step so in this phase, we want to add more to um, improve performance and of course to scale a little bit already. The next campaign, now we have shopping, right? The next campaign should be any of these two here, smart shopping or search. Forget about display, forget about display, probably for your, in, for the, unless you spend, I would say 500 bucks or something like that per day, maybe a little less, but that's a good range because Search, shopping, smart shopping, all that stuff, they can get you to crazy amounts of sales already. It's not that you have to use display to scale, right? You can use shopping search to get to 100, 200, 300, 400 thousand dollars a month in sales or more. I have multiple accounts where that's the case, multiple clients where we go beyond these numbers with only search and shopping. So keep that in mind. But now, search or smart shopping, right? And which of these two to use depends on a bunch of factors. but. If we draw this little graph here and on the on the X axis, we have the functionality of the product and on the Y axis, we have the inventory size. So if you have a large inventory and your products is not necessarily very functional, right? You don't have maybe specific parts or electronics with specific models and, and all that stuff, 
then smart shopping might be perfect. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we start with Google search, right? Then Google search is for you. So if you have a high functionality and a decent inventory size, then Google search is for you, right? Because you can um, abstract things. Let's say you sell 5,000 different pieces of fashion items or, or jewelry, right? You can use search, you can use dynamic search ads and all that good stuff so that people get connected with the right product on your store. Almost a little bit similar to shopping. Or you can um, target categories, you can target subcategories, you can target specific um, types of items in your store. But if you just have a general store with a bunch of unrelated items, Google search is definitely, definitely not for you. And most of the time it will not work. Now, now we get to smart shopping and smart shopping, if you have a less functional product and if your inventory size is a little bit smaller, then I would rather start with smart shopping first, right? Because smart shopping is pretty visual. You show smart shopping ads on YouTube, on display and everywhere. Plus, um, it's not important what type of product you really sell. Smart shopping has the potential to work with everything. But the reason you shouldn't just always blindly go with smart shopping is first of all, because it overrides the priority of your normal shopping ads. And second of all, sometimes Google search can simply work better and you need less data and it is sometimes also less competitive, right? So that's the important point. What's important to note here on this little graph, of course, is that it's a highly, highly simplified version. Both of them work fine in a lot of cases. And I just wanted to come up with some separation here if you are insecure and if you don't have a budget that's big enough for both. So in this case, yes, you can distinguish by the two based on what I said here. Generally, it's a pretty good idea to test both of them because both of them have a highly, um, yeah, have pretty high potential to create profitable sales. But it also depends on how many conversions you generated before, right? So if you have more conversions, the tendency is also closer to smart. If you have less, then you are usually better off with shopping, uh, sorry, with, with search ads. So, you know, 20 conversions, 30, 50 or more in the past month, smart shopping might work better uh, for you in this case. If you're on the edge, try to go with smart if you have past conversions and search if you don't. That's how you can roughly summarize that. But as I said, the things before with inventory size and feature richness of products, etc., still plays a pretty big role here. All right. If you then say, I want to create a smart shopping ad, right? Smart shopping is great. It's easy. And uh, I heard <laughs> good things about it. Yes, that's true. And if you want to use them, then here is a very quick checklist of three items. First of all, assign a daily budget and run it for seven or more days. Smart shopping doesn't work if you just play around with it all the time. If you change bids, if uh, bidding strategies, you cannot really change bids in that sense. If you change the bidding strategy or the product or the daily budget all the time, forget about it. Smart shopping ads have to recalibrate all the time. They are super sensitive. So assign a budget where you can say, okay, for at least the next seven, maybe even 14 days, I'm willing to spend this budget um, every day. For example, 20 bucks or 30 bucks, right? That's why you shouldn't start with 100 because then you cannot leave it run for some time. You will get nervous. You will get, you know, impatient if you see that you spend 100 bucks every day. But if you spend 20, 30, you give Google some time to find the right placements, the right time of the day, the right user and all that stuff. So make sure that you have a budget that you can actually afford to spend for seven days or more. Also start testing with a subset of products. If you advertise all of your products at the same time, the problem is that, as I said before, it overrides everything else that you run with smart shopping at, the, at, at this point in time. And that's not really what you want to do, especially if your normal shopping ads are already making some sales or you see some results from them. So test a subset, maybe test a certain category, maybe test some random products, even if you have a general store, that's definitely better. And then last but not least, you can start with the target ROAS and then switch to max volume if you get very little traffic. Let's say you start a new smart shopping campaign, set the target ROAS to, for example, 250 or 300, 400%. The exact number doesn't really matter here. Just give Google some sort of goal so that they know that they cannot just spend what they want. Chances are that if you do so, you are more likely to get um, cheaper clicks, you're more, a little more likely to get conversions and Google is not just blindly spending, but if it doesn't work, if you get very little traffic, then make the switch to max conversion value without a target, then you should get more results in terms of more clicks and everything. And with this, we enter the fourth stage, which of course is very important. It's optimization and, um, optimization 
as I said before, you have to do all the time, right? It's, it's something that you do on an ongoing basis. There is always something to optimize, but only when you have like multiple campaigns going on and we, when you spend a decent budget, several, several hundred dollars at least, then you can make real optimization. It, it, it's then only where it's worth to really do some in-depth stuff and where, it, where it's worth to make some big improvements to your ad account and your page. So in phase four optimization, it's all about after an initial set of campaigns, the goal is to optimize until sales and profits come in or until more sales and profits come in, right? The big question here is, first of all, when should you optimize? And of course, also how should you optimize? The when is summarized in a pretty easy and quick way because most people get it wrong and they really optimize, they call it optimization from day one without a plan. And that's definitely not what you should do. If you do it too quickly, too much, you are, you know, you are kind of being too quickly here. And it means that you are actually hurting your performance most of the time. So there are two types of optimization with different um, goals and, and scopes. The first is qualitative optimization. And that's something that you can technically always do, right? You can improve your product images. You can test new ones. You can design ones that are more clear, that have higher resolution, that show the product in action. Or you can twist your ads with like better copy if you use search ads. Or you can add negative keywords. That's something that you can always do because it will most most likely make your performance better if you use higher quality stuff higher quality text etc of course it's not always easy to say hey that's higher quality and that isn't but usually you have from gut feeling you can you can tell whether a search query like as i said um, bluetooth hair removal device for women is better than hair removal without anything right we can pretty much agree that that's the case so you can always do that stuff because it will just improve the quality, but you shouldn't always do the quantitative stuff. And that's what most people are focused on. Most people are not focused on adding better images or better ads or negative keywords or optimizing the store itself, which is super important, as I said. Most people focus on these small things like change bits all the time, turn products on and off based on clicks, maybe even add more product uh, or, or add variations of products. You only advertise like the blue and the yellow pair of shoes and now you also add the, the, the red one. These things you should only do with enough data with, as I said, the several hundred dollars in spend or the one, two weeks that you have the campaign running. Then you can do that, but don't do it all the time. This will reset the optimization very often. It will interfere with how things are running. It makes sense, but just don't overdo it. And many people here do just too much optimization it's it's like too much quantitative and too little qualitative optimization so from now on you should think about this and do it in the opposite way i guarantee that if, if you totally focus on qualitative optimization then you will be ahead of many 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 dropshippers and e-commerce businesses out there that are also mostly focused on quantitative because it's easy right don't be the person that spends two hours a day in Google Ads tweaking bids for every single product and uh, making adjustments or so-called adjustments instead of really changing things on the quality level plus the store. So here we see a typical example of a, or here we see a screenshot um, of a client of mine where we have, where we see a bunch of metrics, right? We see that, um, uh, and this is the past 14 days versus the 14 days before. We have a target ROAS goal of 360%. We have 4,500 clicks, which we increased by 30%. We increased the click rate by 15%, the conversion rate by nine, the ROAS by 29, and the CPC, we reduced it by 19. That's why this upward, upwards arrow means improvement and not just more in that case, right? So. Keep that in mind. These are the metrics here. We will get back to that slide here in a second because now I want to show you the optimization pyramid. So there are five different key metrics and of course there are more, but five like key metrics that we want to optimize and focus on. And the most important here is clearly return ad spend. Return ad spend is the only real metric that will determine your profits because um, Besides, of course, your like product price and your cost structure, ROAS gets closest to your actual profitability. So this is the key metric that should you that you should always be focused on, and that will be dependent on all the other metrics that come next. The next is the cost per acquisition. So how much do you pay to make a sale? How much do you pay to get a customer? Which is also dependent on the next 
um, metrics that are coming now. The next me metric here is conversion rate. And that's the first one that you can actually directly influence because conversion rate is influenced by your store, how well it's converting, you know, how well did you optimize it and everything, and also how relevant was your traffic. So if you get a ton of clicks, but your conversion rate is extremely low, you know that you don't have a problem with your CPC, you don't have a problem with your CTR or your impressions or anything like that. You have a problem with your conversion rate, which is best influenced by reducing the price, as I said, testing an entirely different landing page, um, using different images, using more or less text, depending what you're doing right now, using live chat if you haven't done that before, giving, asking people questions, right? Doing a little survey. Hey, why didn't you buy the product yet? A lot of people don't respond, but there are always some that give you a hint. They tell you it's too expensive, it's too confusing, you don't have the product that I was looking for. This can be very insightful data to actually get a conversion rate going where there isn't, where there is none so far, or to improve it, of course. Then we have a submetric, which is CPC. It plays a minor role in the end, because if you pay two bucks, but you have a 10% conversion rate, hey, that's fine usually. But of course, if let's say you have a conversion rate that is okay, but your CPCs are relatively high, you pay like $1, even though you sell a $30 product, then this is something that you have to get lower. And you get lower CPCs, of course, first of all, by bidding less, by um, having higher quality ads that are more relevant to people, and essentially by increasing your CTR. And this is the last metric in this optimization period uh, pyramid. If you have a CPC that is too high, you want to increase your click rate because they directly influence your cost per click, right? If you have a conversion rate that is um, okay, but your CPA is very high, Sometimes it's easier to get a lower CPC than a higher conversion rate. So you always have to look at the metric above and then think about, okay, how can I improve it in the easiest way? What's the lowest hanging fruit here? If you have a conversion rate of 5%, for example, that's way above industry average. And if your CPA is still very high and you're not profitable, it's because these two metrics here, CPC and CTR, are not good enough. So keep this in mind. Don't always try to increase conversion rates or don't always try to get the lowest possible CPC. Look at the metric above and then think, what's the lowest hanging fruit here? Is it easier to increase the click-through rate is, or is it easier to reduce the CPC or is it maybe even easier to increase the conversion rate because so far you spent just 30 minutes building your store, right? Then this should be the very first thing that you do. The goal is to identify your lowest hanging fruits and then use the right optimization method. If you have a click-through rate of 0.1%, you will never get um, a crazy ROAS at a crazy scale. You first of all have to get a better click-through rate depending on your campaign type, right? With search, you have usually higher click-through rates than, for example, with shopping or with display. And here in this example that I showed you a few minutes ago, the, the key metrics that we can improve are the click-through rate and the conversion rate, right? With a 1.5 conversion rate, we are quite happy because the product that we sell has a decent margin and 1.5 is good, but it could definitely be better. And even though in this example, we increased it um, by 9% in this specific window that I mentioned, we definitely want to get closer to the 2% range. And we do that by partly at least doing the things that I mentioned here, right? We are introducing now better um, product pages. We are writing more concise descriptions. So more isn't always better. It's not always better to have that big of a wall of text if you could write a very concise three, four sentence description that tells people exactly what to know. And then maybe somewhere in the bottom, you have like a tab with all the technical details. That's often better than having like a massive wall of text that turns people off. But also our click-through rate, you know, isn't that super great. I mean, it's a shopping campaign, so click-through rates should be in the 1% range. 3%, 4%, something like that is very rare with shopping. But still, I mean, think about it that way. If, you, if we can get our click-through rate from 0.8 to 1.2%, for example, that's 50% more traffic, right? We get 50% more clicks and potentially at least 50% more conversions just by making a switch from 0.8 to 1.2. And that's something that should be very doable if we have better images and all that stuff. So we are now getting better images. We are trying different types of images, white background, ambient background, people. It's a product that you can wear, little hint. Uh, people that are actually wearing the product, people, a uh, product that are just like white background, no person. That's the stuff that we're trying. Because if you look at the stats, 
Um, the CPC is already pretty low, considering it's a competitive fashion space. 39 cents, we're totally fine with that. Uh, the clicks, um, sorry, the, the uh, search impression share here, 43%. Sure, we want to increase that, we want to improve that, but it's quite good. And the ROAS with 3.4, we are definitely, definitely profitable. So we look at what other metrics that need change. Through click through rates, we can get more scale. And through a better, more industry average 2% conversion rate, we will also have a much higher ROAS. So don't just think that you have to improve everything. Focus on the low-hanging fruits where you have the biggest issues. Of course, it's always a goal to have the best metric everywhere, right? Of course, you want to get as close to 100% search impression share as we can, but it doesn't make sense to drastically ramp up our bit now to get there. Keep that in mind. That's extremely important when you optimize. And now we talk about the last step of this 100K framework, and this is scaling, okay? So scaling, everyone who made some sales, of course, at some point wants to get there. Yes, I get it. Google scaling is more difficult than Facebook scaling, unfortunately. Facebook, you can scale super quickly, but on Google Ads, it tends to be more um, robust. It tends to be more long-term. As I mentioned several times on this channel, I have clients that I'm working with for two years now, two and a half years or longer, and we have campaigns that run very, very well for well over a year. I try new ones, I test new ones, of course, but we have certain evergreen campaigns that you can literally run for so long, that's unheard of on Facebook. So that's the big advantage, even though it's harder to get there on Google. So let's look at the scalability of campaign types. We have shopping in the very beginning, which is not crazily scalable, right? But it's definitely, you know, more than enough for many stores. So don't get me wrong here. Then we have search. Usually there's more scaling potential because you can directly target keywords. They are not necessarily more profitable or anything, right? But you can scale them to a larger extent because you have full control with, with, with um, keywords and all that stuff. And then last but not least, we have display and YouTube. They provide crazy scaling potential similar to Facebook because you target videos, you target people based on their behavior, their interests, and not on their search behavior and their search queries. It's a lot harder to make them work. I would say the average client of mine uses mostly shopping, some search, and no display. The average one, right? But clients that are exploring any possible all the possibilities that they have we have some display and youtube campaigns that spend one two three k per day super profitably right but it's not easy to get there so don't try to make it work in the very beginning unless you have like a crazy visual product a new like innovative product you have the the capacity to create really good display ads and maybe youtube ads because it's all about the creative here so that's why they are not really beginner friendly in my opinion and as a little example here, this is another screenshot. And um, if we look at all these campaigns, we have some remarketing over here at the bottom, right? Which is actually not even going that well. Um, and we have a smart display test where we actually have a pretty healthy 3.3 ROAS and we generated, um, you know, one, let me just check. Okay, <laughs> 1,800 clicks over here. This is also pretty good, but the vast majority here are shopping and search campaigns. So it is absolutely, possible to scale to a healthy amount only with these because lately I got a lot of messages like hey I heard YouTube is the next big thing I have to do it I have to do it that's not true YouTube ads are very difficult to make work for e-commerce I can tell you don't think when someone tells you some guru or whatever like you need YouTube ads for your for your store that's not true I can tell you that in most cases this doesn't work and you have to definitely spend some money and time and sweat and, and tears before you get there and here's another example 160k purely running shopping search okay even more simple than the one before less uh campaigns in total decent roas uh, this is actually a, a client and account where with the roas of about 1.8 we're already profitable because everything has been optimized to a very very high degree, 1.82 ROAS or something along those lines. And um, yeah, we see here that this is so, so important to remember. You don't need display and, and, and um, YouTube. It goes well with sh shopping and search, but you have to put in the work. You have to do everything you can to get it um, to that level, okay? So you can certainly scale to 100K already purely with shopping, no search, no nothing. But of course, if you're doing several hundred K and you don't know how to further scale without sacrificing like large amounts of, of, of uh, or s sacrificing uh, a lot of profitability, then it might be worth looking into this still. 
So here's a little scaling strategy outline. First of all, scale chopping ads as much as possible because they are the lowest hanging fruits and eventually the ROAS declines. Keep an eye on your search impression share, which I mentioned in a second again. So scale them as much as you can because it's easiest to do so. Then launch and scale search ads. We're not talking about smart chopping and stuff here, okay? Because that's part of the previous um, parts already in this video. I talked about shopping, smart shopping search. So try to get your shopping as to the best possible level, then st uh, search, starting with low hanging fruits and uh, those keywords that convert on sh uh, shopping already, and then get more loose. So if you have shopping ads and you know, hey, people looking for X, Y, Z, they are converting very, very well, you might wanna try these keywords on, on search. It's not said, and that's very important, that those will also work great on search because on shopping you have images, you have prices and all that stuff. So it's not necessarily a keyword that works on search as well, but chances are that it's a good place to start. And then third, launch display or YouTube ads. Find customers that are not actively searching for your product right now, but that may be interested. So when you build conversions with the other campaign types, Google will learn what your customers look like. They will automatically build so-called similar audiences, which are comparable to lookalikes on Facebook. So your, these are audiences that are like the ones that are already converting on your page. You can send them very good image ads on display network. You can send them YouTube videos. And these are your low hanging fruits for scaling to the next level. But again, only if you have the budget, the capacity to write to, to create great ads and you have some past conversion data. The shopping scaling checklist is first of all, max out your search impression share. You want to have the maximum search. When your campaign is performing, when your campaign is very profitable, you have to max out your search impression share or else you're not really scaling. So the search impression share here shows roughly your scaling potential, right? In this example here, it's 51% in this campaign, 68 and 50, 54. This means that technically we are getting 51% of all the available impressions in the top campaign, 68 in the second, 54 in the third. And this t tells us that we are roughly more or less getting half the available impressions, which is quite good to know, right? Because it means that there is a lot more room for us to scale. And this metric is very helpful in indicating how far you can get. If you have a campaign with 98% search impression share, don't bother crazily increasing your CPC bits, but because this will most likely just make everything more expensive, you won't get more traffic. These metrics are not super accurate, but they are a good indicator and they will definitely point you in the, into the right direction. And then the next point on the shopping scaling checklist is run multiple shopping campaigns for best sellers, for new products, testing different negative keywords. That's another point where it gets very, very intense and complicated, right? Multi shopping campaign structure, in-depth negative keyword list, advanced shopping strategies, bidding strategies. This is probably more than a one hour video all by itself already. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Test multiple shopping campaigns where you target different types of consumers, different products, etc. Carefully increase your CPC step by step and not too aggressively from 20 cents to 80 cents. Do 20, 30, 45, 60, something like that so that you're always paying the least possible amount. Use standard shopping showcase and smart showcase is something that we didn't talk about in this video because you know things will pretty much get out of hand if we go super in detail on everything now but showcase shopping being quite interesting for your mobile um, users they will see multiple products at the same time from your store you can pre-qualify them even better essentially you should try all three shopping campaign types in your scaling efforts and then spot inefficiencies in your feed and your website. So where are products with very poor titles in your feed? Where are products with terrible images or with images where you don't really see or understand what the product actually is, right? These are inefficiencies. And then of course, constant ongoing website optimization is absolute key when you want to maximize your results and not only look at the Google Ads account all the time. So yeah, this was roughly the framework and I know that not every step I got down to the deepest possible detail, but we're already like, I don't know, 40, 50 minutes in now, and um, it's getting pretty complex. I hope that so far this was a good overview. I have some more important notes, so don't worry, it's not over yet, or <laughs> I have to, maybe I have to disappoint you that it's not over yet, but whatever, um, this framework can definitely get you to this number of sales. As I said, I, I came up with this by actually analyzing what I'm doing with accounts, especially in the beginning is or especially when scaling and trying new campaigns and put it into this hopefully 
easy to digest and understandable video. And with this being said, some more points. A typical scaling curve can look something like this, right? If you're not immediately scaling from 2K to 100K, don't worry, it's not the typical thing. When you see all those screenshots and you know people on Facebook that overnight scale from 100 bucks per day to 15,000, it is not the normal thing. Most clients that I'm working with that now have, that, that are, we're selling millions of dollars, it was slow and steady, but that's usually what gets you the, the long-term results, right? If you are going from 100 to 10K overnight, it typically means that after a few weeks, you might be down to zero again, or that after a few days, a product that was a winner dies out or something. So don't worry if this process takes a little longer. Usually, as I pointed out here, the turning point comes roughly like at month two or three or something, when optimization kicks in, data gets better, you know what works, you add new products, you test new things, and things will get better and better. Google understands your business. That's where things get really interesting. But don't expect that you change some things here and there and immediately you are up to like 100k or a 50k or something like that in sales or of course if you're already doing like let's say 300k a month don't expect that to double every single month it's possible to do so in the beginning every now and then because numbers are still low but later on you will more likely see like a 10 or 20 or 30 percent increase uh, on a monthly basis Keep some more things in mind, just some random notes, right? Some few stores are hard to advertise and scale with Google because you have like super novel products that people are not yet looking for or they are highly visual, small inventory stores. Then Google can still work, definitely, but maybe you should try Facebook first or you should try Google with low budgets. Also, sometimes there simply isn't enough interest to sustain 100K a month. So not every niche, not every store can be scaled to 100K a month. It's something that I realized in the past we had crazily profitable campaigns at 70, 80K a month, but it wasn't possible to get beyond that because the niche was so, so super specific. Pair that with a small country, for example, if you don't sell in the US and it's impossible to get there. So sometimes don't stress out if you go, don't get there. If you really want or have to get to a six or seven figure um, sales volume, it might be a better idea to set up a second store or something. Also, hundreds of options in Google Ads, only a fra fraction was covered. I mentioned that before. Of course, there's more to it. Of course, there are details to search ads. There's dynamic search. There are responsive search ads, normal search ads, responsive display. There is remarketing. There are all the details about shopping and bidding strategies and so on. But I think I made my point clear on how you should go about getting a good Google Ads account that gets results going. And you should mix it with other traffic sources if applicable, right? If you have a visual product, if you have a new product, don't think that Google should be everything. Even though I'm using Google every day and spend like between 30 and $50,000 per day on Google alone, it's not something where you should go like this and say, okay, Google is everything. I don't want to try anything else because that's that's the best thing since, you know, since sliced bread or whatever. So uh, make sure that you try other things, especially if Google Ads is working, but also if you just cannot make Google work at all. Sometimes it's worth them to check something else out. And yeah, with this being said, if you like this content so far, and if you just want more more details, step-by-step -step guys, the nitty gritty stuff on how to scale bits and when to change and how to test the product, how to um, you know, get the initial campaigns going, how they should exactly look like in the settings and all that stuff, then you can check the link in the description where you find two options, which is my training that will get completely overhauled and updated in early 2021. So depending on when you watch this video, it's already it all has already been updated to the newest 4.0 version, or you are seeing the old one, but you will then get a free update for the newest one anyway, if you join, or if you say, hey, Marco, you know what? I have uh, an account that I just don't want to work on myself anymore, or I want your personal help, then you can also check out the other option on there where we can work together one-on-one, -on -one, where I can also manage your ads if you like to. But these are two different options that you have if you say, hey, this wasn't that bad and I want to actually learn a little bit more from you or I want you to do my things to really take my ads to the next level, make more sales, keep more profits and all that good stuff. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long. I hope you, you know, uh, didn't get lost in any of the stages here. I hope that you took some notes because there were some really important points that are really, you know, that will be present in your everyday efforts with Google. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, please leave a leave a like below this video. Let me know in the comments if there's anything completely new for you in this video. And of course, subscribe if you want to get more Google Ads content, more e-commerce content that helps you to take your business to the next level.
So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video or maybe speak with you soon in one of my personal services. So thanks a lot and bye bye.